Hi, and welcome to a very short introduction. From ancient Greece to branding, globalisation to Homer, and logic to fashion, we'll showcase a concise and dynamic insight into a range of diverse topics for wherever your curiosity may lead you. So here is today's very short introduction. My name is Paul Klenerman. I work at the University of Oxford in the Department of Medicine. The title of my BSI is a very short introduction to the immune system. So what is the immune system? The immune system is everywhere in your body and it works as a unit to protect you against infection. That's its main job. It keeps you healthy. And just now, of course, in the pandemic, it's getting a lot of press. Although most of the time people just ignore it because it keeps you so healthy that you don't even really know it's working. The key points everybody should know about the immune system. First, I think, fascinatingly, every animal has an immune system, and that includes animals that you wouldn't expect to, like fruit flies. Actually, it stretches into plants. It's got quite effective immune systems against viruses, and even bacteria can get infected by viruses so-called phages, and they have an immune system that is very sophisticated, recognises individual phages, and provides the bacteria with memory, like our own immune system, to protect the bacteria in future and all their descendants. And in fact, this year's Nobel Prize went to a couple of scientists who discovered how to use this so-called CRISPR system to gene edit, and hopefully use that for benefit in, in human diseases. The second thing that's amazing about the immune system is how variable it is between people. So we're all born with a slightly different immune system because we inherit different genes that can influence it. And then we're exposed to different microorganisms or vaccines throughout our life and that trains it differently. We also have different microbiomes that affect the way the immune system develops. So that changes it between individuals and then throughout our life our immune system changes and, and that's something that's become evident in the pandemic again where younger people find it easier to deal with the virus on average than, than older people and so the whole ageing process impacts the way the immune system responds to new challenges. The next amazing thing about your immune system is it can respond to stuff that you don't even know exists yet. So an example would be SARS-CoV-2 in October 2019, nobody had ever heard of it, but your body already had the immune cells ready to fight it and that's for a couple of reasons in fact one is that your so-called naive repertoire the the cells that your body makes are trained in such a way that they they contain individual immune cells that can respond to shapes and things that are derived from viruses even if it doesn't really know what the virus is going to be so uh, we've all got that capacity. The other thing which is emerging, which is quite interesting, is that we've all had infections with coronaviruses through our life as the common cold, and that has moulded the immune system as well. So the, these these cells get uh, expanded, so the populations get bigger, and that means that we've got coronavirus-specific populations, some of which at least partially cross-react with, with SARS-CoV-2. At the moment, we don't know whether that is in any way protective or even harmful, but we do know that you can measure these things. So for those reasons, so the fact that you're born with this incredible capacity to respond to different things, and then, then that capacity gets even uh, broadened in, in many ways by, by exposure to lookalike organisms, that does uh, make your immune system very flexible. I got interested in immunology because I had some great teachers at university. They just made it interesting. The immune system is very complicated. It's a bit like the brain in many ways. And lots of the arguments were a little bit philosophical about why it was designed the way it is and concepts like tolerance and, and um, memory have resonances with people studying neuroscience and, and the kind of complex interactions of, of different sorts of cells to create behaviours. That's essentially what the immune system is doing. And actually, the interaction between the brain and the immune system is still fascinates me, even though it's not something I personally work on, but it's clearly something of interest in both directions. And then I got into the research because when I started working in infectious diseases in the 90s, there was a huge problem with HIV. At that point, we didn't have very good drugs, and the immune systems of the patients that we saw were severely impaired, and it was a huge problem, and the drugs have made an incredible difference. 
And so I wanted to understand what was going on better. And immunology is just fascinating in that respect. And it's one of the big success stories in, in modern science where not only we, do we actually understand things, but we provided cures for diseases like hepatitis C through drugs. And we've used the immune system to treat cancers, on the other hand, where the immune system is is somewhat ineffective, you can boost it. So, so all of these approaches are, are, are just amazing and I think it's a fascinating subject.